The burden of disease is based on cause of death, right? So we have uh, different causes of death, whether it's stroke, cancer, you know, uh, cardiac arrest, different types of things. Pollution is a risk factor for death, like many other things. So when you look at what pollution contributes to, it's primarily contributing to non-communicable diseases, which are the actual cause of death on the death certificate. You will almost never see pollution as a cause of death. Now, on a country by country basis, it varies a little bit who will be uh, exposed to which and which would be the priority in terms of the number of people affected by which type of pollution. So if we look at Madagascar compared to India, the numbers are going to look quite differently, both because of the number of people that that country has, but also in terms of the actual uh, percent of death attributed to pollution. So in Madagascar, for instance, 25% of all deaths are coming from pollution, whereas in India, it might be a bit different and so on. <laughs> In Madagascar, for example, 90% of people are still using charcoal or wood or dung inside the home for cooking, right? That's not necessarily the case in India, though they still have an indoor air pollution problem in much of rural India. Every car battery gets recycled somewhere. Um, in high income countries, they're typically recycled very cleanly. And in low and middle income countries, they're recycled very uncleanly a majority of the times. So maybe more than half of all batteries in low and middle income countries are disposed of and recycled improperly. The second big source that we worry about is actually adulterated spices. This has been found in countries, very spice rich countries like India, Bangladesh, Morocco, Georgia, and it has been found in some imported spices in the US as well. Uh, so what happens there is during the processing of the spices, they're adding lead chromates or lead salts, which actually lend a beautiful yellow or red color to the spices. A third point of concern for lead exposures is lead glazed pottery or aluminum cookware that contains lead. And that um, when you cook with it, it actually enables the lead to leach directly out of these containers into the food. The interesting aspect of it is how some of the benefits which have occurred over the last three or four years in terms of reductions of indoor air pollution and improved water sanitation in, in Africa, which have been great benefits and have reduced some of those burdens on the population, have kind of been offset by increases in global ambient air pollution and industrial pollution exposures in Southeast Asia. And that largely reflects the fact that you have more industrialization occurring in those countries occurring at the same time as you're getting urbanization, more people moving into the areas where the pollution are, and also an aging population at the same time. So those, those combine to increase the sort of like the burden in those populations.
that's what this report really does, to look beyond simply air pollution itself to looking at chemical pollution in its widest sense. Well, then I think it kind of changes a bit because we begin to then focus on potential, potential pollution exposures in the indoor environment from plasticizers, um, potential water contamination with pharmaceuticals and metabolites of pharmaceuticals. So then, actually, I'm not so certain we have a downward trajectory everywhere, and very often, where we, I'm uncertain we have that downward trajectory, it's because those things haven't been an issue until very, very recently. If you just study our cities in the United Kingdom with our lower levels of pollution and chemical contamination, you can still see significant impacts on sort of child birth, you can look at changes on cognition in children, on dementia risk, on cardiovascular risk, on asthma, which means the chemicals in our environment now in our city, even at the low levels we experience them, are having a health impact. And that then becomes scaled upwards when you begin to consider these impacts in countries where, to be quite honest, the levels of pollution they are experiencing are are almost like 1950s London, you know, we are talking about almost historic levels of pollution which we don't experience now. Okay, okay,